Sonic Winter Jam. It starts out with it being revealed that there's a base of Eggman's in a tundra, and that's where Eggman lives now. I wonder how he decides which of his million bases to retreat to. I have to assume he uses a random number generator to do it. I don't know who's talking when someone says Eggman's been like this for days, so that's lame. He looks like he's just sitting there in front of a blank screen showing nothing but snow. Cubot says we must mean business, and Orbot's mad because Eggman's just watching reality TV and making Orbot's work pile up. First off, not even Cubot would think Eggman means business when he's very clearly watching TV. He'd hear the TV. Second, the art didn't even show the TV shows on the screen until this point. I don't know how it can be that sloppy in a comic release in 2024. And why isn't the crack on one of the screens fixed already? He had no reason to damage the screen because he hasn't interacted with anyone but them in a long time. Only Cubot is there to make him mad. And all he do in response is slap him. Not damage his screen that he has to watch all the time. At least it explains why he's being a couch potato like when Sonic Boom Eggman gave up. Rather than being out of character, he's researching for new ways to spite his enemies. I feel like it still continues the running theme of Eggman being pathetic in this comic, but that is just me being made cynical by now. I do love this idea. It is realistic no matter the Eggman that eventually he'd get writer's block and watch TV trying to get a new idea because constantly reusing the same ideas hasn't worked. But anyways, why does Orbot say this is making their work pile up more than ever as if I'm actually supposed to believe Eggman usually helps out with the chores? He wouldn't notice a difference. I hate that this is the only excuse for why Orbot wants to do something to cause the plot. There better be a real excuse for the plot after this. It'd be so easy for them to say, let's do something to have fun. And while at first I liked seeing the Silver Sonic Mark II, I instantly started hating it because it makes no sense that he hasn't used it against Sonic in all of this time. It made way more sense in Archie that it was used against him right after SA1. Then I see Sonic at the beach still, and he notices something, and eventually, a giant chomper jumps, and it turns out they're all eaten by it at once because it's just that fast. Wow, that's competent of the villains. And there's no way they could have avoided that. It turns out Cubot has a TV announcer voice chip. It must be to entertain Eggman. Sonic asks Tails for ideas, and because he doesn't get an idea right away, his impatience is actually used for the first time in forever because he already says that's not an idea. Tails says he didn't say anything even though he said, hmm. This better not be trying to imply that Sonic actually thought Tails was saying what Cubot was because there's no reason he would say that. I guess it's not and Tails is just being really pedantic by insisting, hmm, isn't saying anything because it's not a word. After all, I doubt it's in the dictionary. This is a Fleetway Sonic moment where he's confusingly mean to Tails out of nowhere, but I actually love it because it got me interested in his character. Cubot reveals the stage for them and expects them to do trials against Badniks competing for a Chaos Emerald. Why in the world would they get given a real Chaos Emerald, not a fake one? If you knew to write a character lampshading, really? Why write it? Even Cubot isn't this stupid. He has no reason to have the heroes have the chance of stealing emeralds from their hot-tempered boss and risking them getting dismantled for it. He has nothing to gain. The prize could be a chili dog. A poisoned one. Orbot's smarter than this. I wish I saw Eggman or his forces get the emerald. Then it would have given us a little tension trying to seem like it was building up to something. Cubot says Sonic would only get the Emerald if he gave a thrilling performance. Why would he think he wouldn't? Why risk this? The heroes find this suspicious because it's so convenient for them. It tries to make them look smart, though in universe it's not smart because no, Cubot really is that stupid. But of course they don't know that. Omega says he's preparing to blast some doors for himself. Why doesn't he just do it instead of Cubot getting the time to say that as a bonus he'll get to destroy a new Badnik? Omega won't be interested in continuing to listen to what they have to say after Orbot saying this is a problem, because his dialogue there is boring, and he doesn't respect them. 
There was no reason for Omega to be on the beach. Team Dark's presence came out of nowhere. All of them being on the beach made it come off like it was continuing after endless summer. But the lack of presence of Tangle, Whisper, and Jewel make it clear that it isn't. So it's just confusingly samey. Omega naturally changes his mind because he wants to destroy another robot. It makes sense that Kuba told them to break into Team Sub-3 because he's not an expert at math. For once, it takes advantage of him not being smart in a believable way. Orbot has to point out they couldn't get Shadow or Knuckles, so they have to go into Team Sub-2. It would have taken almost no effort to think, let's pair up characters who usually don't get paired up. Instead, it's lazy. Though to be fair, what could Orbot have possibly done to override their decisions in terms of what partner they want? He didn't have the ability to separate them from each other with walls that rise out of the floor with a button press. Eggman would have thought to put that in the base. It's just boring to see this. Tails says they have to secure the light bulbs exactly four units from each other when decorating the palm trees. Why did he merely say units? No one's gonna know what that means. Even though Tails can fly, Sonic's so impatient to get this done over with that he does decorating. But it turns out Big's fishing line got tangled in his glove so he falls and gets restrained in his Christmas decorations along with Tails who was just off screen. I appreciate that his fishing line was used for something new. I won't hold this against him because I'm sure the heroes will get the emerald anyways. Rouge tells Omega to distract them while she heads for the emerald. Omega plans to shoot Cubot and Orbot, and Rouge heads for the Emerald, and an explosion behind her keeps her from getting it, because the explosions are just that good that they make the ceiling crumble. And big surprise, Orbot looks completely uninjured after this. Everyone's immune to rubble landing on them in the Sonic universe. I guess the reason Orbot corrected himself when he called himself a better person instead of Robot is that it's because Eggman programmed him to think like that out of condescension. It turns out Cream made a jelly cake, and Amy says it tastes great. So Team Rose wins, an event that has nothing to do with Winter and feels creative because of it, and finally develops on Cream's character, in a way that makes sense because she references her mother, so her mother told her how to cook. So it would have still made sense to happen if she wasn't a girl. She told her not to let ingredients go to waste because she's smart. It's nice to say that her mother is a genius cook. So she gets developed on too. It's nice to see Cream be respected as a character by a writer instead of just being misery bait the whole comic. Most of the time I'm still disappointed by this writer though, but he's definitely a step up. He comes off like he actually read Sonic's character profile, and so he cared enough to write that he's impatient as his main character trait, instead of his main character traits being smug and trying to redeem everybody. A page is wasted on interviewing each team with one panel each, and their dialogue's so boring I couldn't care less about it. I had to force myself to read it all. Since when did Rouge trust Omega with the crafting challenge? All she did was tell him to distract. Why did Big think he had fun? Even stupid people don't think stuff for literally no reason logical or emotional. Then the heroes have to run with dolls, protecting them and avoiding snowballs. In a twist, even Sonic fails despite him running at Sonic's speed. Because the super speed ruins his doll. The speed force didn't protect it. Even though when Sonic ran while carrying Helen, she didn't die for the same logic as here. I have to assume he has to think to have his speed force protect. And he didn't think to do that for this because it wasn't alive. Not to mention looks like Eggman. And I know Helen was only in Sonic X, but the whole Speed Force protection thing is canon because Amy must have done it for Big when she was running through lip to lips with him. Team Dark wins. Somehow Tails thinks there's a chance of Sonic's enemy cutting out footage of Sonic's ego being bruised, which is so satisfying in this comic. It's sweet to see Rouge say their judgement was optimal this time and call Omega a big guy, even if it's just her bragging about herself not complimenting him. Then there's actually a joke in a kid's comic where Froggy died. What else is that implying here? Well, in the next page we see him grab a chow with his tongue, so he shouldn't make a joke that establishes something just instantly contradicted in a series that's not about the comedy. 
Where it either looks like it's dead or sick. I get to see Amy tie Sonic up with Christmas decorations even. That's creative. I have to assume she snuck up on them. The story shows what the heroes went through at a much faster pace because of all these screens in the background. Which is great because the trials would have made for boring scenes if they were each their own scene. The heroes are expected to make a sculpture. Sonic uses his spin dash on the wall of an ice block like he's doing parkour. And Tails helps even though he doesn't have to because Sonic has Sonic speed. How could this make a noticeable difference? The sculpture falls apart immediately. Even though I'm sure Sonic made an ice sculpture of the bears in AOSTH. He's just not as talented there. It's explained that the statue became Diamond Dust. I guess in a reference to Diamond Dust Zone the writer was told to make, because I doubt he's a Sonic fan too. It's already unlikely enough as it is that GG, one of the writers, is also a Sonic fan. I have no idea how Sonic failed here, but I can't bring myself to feel sorry for Sonic and IDW. Let's make him the chew toy a lot more often. It's necessary for balance. There's a reason I hated that he was non-stop succeeding in AOSCH from just the first episode. On its own, that sounds silly, because it's common sense to have the main character be competent, and you're supposed to root for him, so you should always want him to win. But what's annoying is when the story doesn't have it make sense in context instantly without thinking about it. Like, he gets stuff out of nowhere. Out of complete nowhere, Froggy shoots a laser from his eye to carve an ice sculpture. This is a magic-filled universe where tons of characters have magical powers. So it can make sense considering the rule established in the Sonic franchise with Sonic characters having powers. It's good that he can be cool. A laser is one of the easiest possible ideas to come up with as a new ability for a Sonic character, right up there with elemental powers. But at least the writer is creatively inspired enough to come up with it. Why doesn't the statue immediately crumble when immediately crumbled for Sonic, though? It's made of the same material. Why is Orbot saying he's sequence breaking when he's just making a sculpture like they're all told to do? There wasn't a specific sequence. Cubot says that Froggy is a production plant. Froggy was never captured at all. So the Froggy here is just a robot. Wow, that's lame compared to what it looks like. So much for the writer being brilliant and creatively inspired. I'm sure he thought this was creative too, but no. Because the RG Sonic comic already had infiltrator robots, and so did Sonic Sunday Strips, and Sadie M, and Fleetway. This is just the first time an infiltrator has been made of Froggy, which is the bottom of the barrel of creativity, because it's like how Sonic Prime is like, here's Knuckles, but he's a pirate. At least this makes more sense on a surface level than the actual Froggy being able to shoot lasers, because most people wouldn't think of the idea that Froggy was just that brave in Gamma's hands and would rather find out where he'd take him. But they just think he'd rather laser him to escape the scary robot as soon as possible. So this is better. But now I'm really wishing Tails would give Froggy cybernetic eyes that let him shoot lasers. Froggy never leaves Big side anyways, and Big can handle robots, so it wouldn't be necessary. So of course he wouldn't do it even if he did have the guts. It's obvious a laser can come in handy, but Big's almost never in a situation that would require it. Rouge gets the emerald effortlessly. Eggman finds out what happened, making me wonder why he even came here if he didn't come here before. I guess he was on his way to the bathroom or kitchen and this room was in the way. Or it was near the hallway on the way there, so he heard the commotion. Again, it's lazy to not explain that, like how I don't know how Eggman survived his city exploding, and he came back with no fanfare. A button is pressed off screen, having the floor the heroes are on spring up, sending Sonic flying out of the fortress into the snow. This reminds me of the end of the Sonic Spinball adaptation, Archie. Rouge thinks that was the most annoying way to get an emerald, because apparently she's easily stressed out in response to challenges. I thought she was optimistic. Amy says it was all worth it being charmingly optimistic, and Cream finds the Christmas decorations that people conveniently hung on these hills for fun off screen to be beautiful. Why are they here in the summer? There's hills here. It's not the South Pole. Sonic says to enjoy the moment while it lasts, as I wonder how the Christmas decorations got here. I guess some teenagers decorated it just to be nice. It's missing an explanation that the snow is kept there from technology artificially keeping this place cool, so the Eggman can have an ice fortress here. 
Maybe the chopper moved really far away really fast. So the snowy area isn't in the same biome as the beach. But that wasn't conveyed. Eggman's annoyed not finding Cubot's footage of the heroes entertaining and deletes it. I have to assume it's just because people he hates are on the TV succeeding, and he doesn't think seeing Sonic humiliated is worth it. Logically, he would keep the footage of Sonic's ego being bruised, not forget it. This issue by Ayazman Omar Eita is about Sonic and his friends having to participate in creative trials because of Cubot sending a chopper to kidnap them from a beach. The plot was interesting because there was a lot of variety, and I didn't feel like it happened before. At least it had twists. Even if one of them turned out lame because it doesn't explain itself right away, getting me to think of a different explanation. I'd like to see Froggy do that, not a robot. At least it had foreshadowing that didn't instantly give the game away. Why did Cubot already have a Froggy robot that'd be almost useless to Eggman? Granted, it'd be a surprise attacker. But why would Eggman have ever thought to build Froggy Infiltrators before Sonic Infiltrators, which could ruin his reputation? I guess Cubot had nanobots instantly build it with AI with the press of a button. Come to think of it, since he hired Mimic to hunt down Whisper, and he knows he can shapeshift, why didn't he just tell him to shapeshift into Sonic and never stop doing that? He shapeshifted into Sonic in the Tango Whispers miniseries, and it's never explained why he didn't go back to doing that. What an idiot. So he could have very easily not even gone into the restoration because he'd be busy getting paid by Eggman to frame Sonic. I guess this was a good issue. It was constantly confusing me, so I usually had the feeling that it was a bad issue. At least until the trials actually started. But it's usually just the dialogue that's confusing. And I think I remember always feeling this way in reviewing the comic. It's usually just the dialogue that makes no sense in IDW, making characters uncharacteristically stupid. Which is worse for me than puns and fourth wall breaking because it's disrespectful to the characters. But since the story was constantly creative, maybe this is a great issue. This might be the best issue in the comic. By the way, I'm glad I didn't comment on the big oof controversy. Apparently my assumption was right. Sonic really wasn't being sarcastic. Which makes sense because that would have been completely out of character after he lectured Surge about the value of life earlier. <laughs>